Hi folks, welcome and thanks for joining. So today we're going to explore another one of the amazing properties of milk and we're going to turn it into a completely clear plastic and we're going to take this plastic and we're going to make embossing powder in any color. Now to do this what we're going to need of course is some milk. Fat free milk is best. We're going to need some vinegar, just regular vinegar, and we're going to need some ammonia, regular household cleaning ammonia. And I'm going to use food colors to make my embossing powders. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first step in making the uh, sustainable embossing powder is we want to begin with milk and Fat-free milk is best. That's why we don't have to deal with fats and sugars in the milk and rinsing that out. So just start with fat-free milk. And we're going to warm it. It's been warmed in the microwave. I added one cup. Of course you can make more. Uh, the uh, measurements are simply not that critical. And just like I did with the acrylic, I'm going to begin piping in the vinegar. Now the reaction is just a little bit different with milk than it is with the uh, floor polish. And I'll hold this up close. Perhaps not. You will see the curds begin to shy away from the whey that's inside. The spots that you see are actually the whey separating. So the more vinegar that you add, the more you drive the curds out of solution of whey. And I think that's plenty. The reaction is immediate. As you can see, we're beginning to get the casein precipitate. We're just going to let that sit just a little bit longer give the vinegar a little bit more time to work it the result is going to be a little bit different as well um, you're going to get a gooey mass of casein in the end processes are very similar to what I did last week precipitating the acrylic out of the floor finish in that now I'm simply going to use a coffee filter to capture the casein and we're going to dispose of the whey and it's had plenty of time We're going to give that just a little bit of time to precipitate and drain out. All right, so I have rinsed the uh, casein with water, and it's important to do that because you want to get all the vinegar out because we're coming back with an ammonia, and they are uh, ammonia is a is an alkali, and vinegar is an acid. So we're going to pat the water out of it now because we need to weigh this somewhat. And just a couple of faithful towels will do. 
drive off a fair amount of the water. When you first took it out, it was rather gooey and sticky. And once you have it dry, it's going to become more cottage cheesy like. And that's where you want. So now we're going to transfer it back into the same bowl that we used to separate the casein from the whey. And I've driven off a good bit of the water. And as you can see, now it's more crumbly. And that's the consistency that you want. And it is 14 grams. Now for every 10 grams of completely dry casein, you're going to want to add 100 milliliters of ammonia. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to ballpark it and I'm going to cut back the ammonia just a little bit because I know that there's probably a little bit of water still in here. So I'm going to assume four grams of water. So I'm going for 100 milliliters of ammonia. All right, so I have measured out 100 milliliters of ammonia and I have broken up the curds just a little bit because once I add that, we're going to stir this. Now, um, in nature, uh, as Buckmeister Fullerene said, uh, chemists, engineers, scientists, all that we can do is what nature permits. And nature doesn't have a measuring cup so a lot of these are just ballpark just to get you started in quantities where it becomes a workable solution if you add too much ammonia well it's simply just going to take a little longer to dry so don't worry we can only do what nature permits okay and i'm going to drop in my little thing here now, if you don't have a stirring plate like I do, well, you can use just a blender. You want to pop that into there without the stir bar, of course. And you want to pulse this until you break up the curds. Pretty good. And then you want it to sit in here for 24 hours. Now there is no shortcut to this. This chemistry takes 24 hours for the casein to dissolve in the ammonia and the polymer chains to form. But I'm going to stir for 24 hours here. And a gentle stir will do. We'll be back in 24 hours and continue. And after mixing for 24 hours, the solution is ready. And what you will notice is a yellowish solution, slightly viscous to the viscosity of a light syrup with no clumps left of the casein. There is no shortcut to the 24 hours. The chemistry takes that long for the casein to polymerize. And we're ready to pipe it. Now this is the time when you want to separate and turn your solution into the different colors that you want. types of things that you'll want to pipe your uh, solution onto for drying are things such as a, uh, a nice shiny plastic plate perhaps a silicone baking mat or even uh, Teflon do not use glass plates or any kind of glass the casein is a superior adhesive it was used and still being used in the manufacturing of uh, plywood, boats, airplanes. So if you put it to the glass, uh, you're never getting it off. You'll have to wash it off. 
Okay. Pipes them out here. Spread it out a little bit. Okay, now, if you'll notice these bubbles, they will dry in there. And a very simple way to get rid of those is with the hair dryer. Now, if you've got the hair dryer in your hand, you can also use it to dry the casein in a couple of minutes. Now, you can also let this air dry. It'll take about 24 hours for it to air dry, depending on humidity and temperature. Now, once it's completely dried, you simply peel it off. Here is the, uh, the clear. A couple of different. And I've made some uh, blue. Now what I'm using is just a toothpick to peel it off, but uh, anything that you can use to get up underneath of it is just fine. And here is red. Now we're going to take these and pop them again into our uh, blender and uh, grind it up. Okay so I have a little bit of the clear in the uh, blender already ground up and I'm going to leave that in there and I'm going to add the blue and um, I'm thinking just a few clear sparkles mixed in with the blue will be uh, kind of cool. So that's why I'm doing that. But you simply just take your pieces. Pop them into your blender and uh, you uh, let it go until it's uh, to a fine powder. So that what we end up with is a very finely ground powder. Very nice, very nice. Now what you see in the back here is um, there was some particles stuck to the glass of the blender. So I spritzed it with alcohol and poured it out onto this. And I'm just simply going to let the alcohol evaporate so that I can recover every particle. And I did the same thing with the red. And here's the red. It's hard to see because my uh, plate is red. But you folks are a bad influence on me because looky here what I have done. A serious scientist has gone out and shopped for tiles so that I can put the embossing powder on here to demonstrate for you. Alright, so the, uh, the tiles are here and here's my powder. Now to help the powder bond to the tile, I'm going to use a vinegar. And I've tried uh, ammonia and I've tried plain water and they all work. But my preference is going to be the vinegar because uh, the way it looks. And plus, once we take it back to vinegar, we're going to make this more water resistant. And uh, I think that's something desirable. So I'm going to go through this and we're going to just spritz some vinegar all over the top of this tile a good amount wet it down really good and then I'm going to pop this into the microwave and you're going to love this I'm going to pop into the microwave for 30 seconds on high no heat gun no oven no high temperatures just a 30 second blast in the microwave is all of this takes Now you see the uh, you see the embossing powder, the casein embossing powder. It's flying around pretty good on the tile because there's a lot of vinegar on it. So you can adjust that on your own. I uh, I am not the artist.
And I'm going to do this in real time so that you guys can see it. Okay. What do you think? Isn't that just beautiful? Okay. We're going to give this just a minute to cool. And it is very hot at this moment right here and it's still bubbling so give it a chance to settle back down on the surface and let the uh, vinegar finish its job. Okay 30 seconds into the microwave and I've let them cool down for a moment. I still think that they uh, they're just a little bit warm but there we have it nice and sparkly uh, yeah <laughs> I did pile it on pretty good but you get the idea uh, it's a beautiful sparkle and it's still wet with vinegar and once that calms down you will uh, lose some of the height and here's the blue and I'm hoping that I can catch the light just right for you so you can get an idea nice and shiny like blue crystals on a tile all right all right then there we have it a completely 100 percent sustainable way to make embossing powder using milk vinegar and ammonia invented right in front of you. Now, the subscriber that asked me to find a way to make embossing powder more cheaply than what you buy prompted the previous video on how to precipitate acrylic out of floor finish. But, acrylic is made from oil. And the goal of my channel and my company is to replace as many products as possible with sustainable alternatives. The subscriber that asked me this has dubbed this new never seen before medium that you've seen done right here. Lisa. So have fun with it. I think you're going to like this. I'll be on Elizabeth. Je suis at home de mon. And if you found this video helpful and you like this channel, well, please subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Or if you want, you can email me. My email is down in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye bye. And at 24 hours, the solution. Solution. Solution.